Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Showing off my new overhead setup, hope you dig it. This video is sponsored by my cube solving apps, CubeSnap and CubeSnap2. Have an unsolved cube laying around? Extremely good chance one of these apps can solve it, even the weird ones. I'm willing to say these are two of the most full featured cube solvers out there. Pick them up for 99 cents each, go solve your cubes, and then go brag to people who hate when you're smart. Just to give my app a little credibility, I was once ranked just right below Doodle Jump. Okay, moving on. It's happened. iOS 14 is out. Apple only has so much time to tell you about the new features in its keynote. In this video, I want to tell you about some of the really cool, more hidden things you can do with iOS 14 that maybe no one else is telling you. Number one, I want to talk about the fastest way to launch apps that are not right at your fingertips. Yes, Apple is trying to reduce the overall app footprint on your screen with library, but if you were to select an app from here, it could still involve some Where's Waldo energy. Who in the heck wants a visual search task? Apple, though, seems to have caught on to this. The fastest way in iOS 14 to launch an app that may not be immediately under your fingertip is with search. Type in a few letters of the app, and the app is now on top of the search stack. And you have a button that actually says Go, not Search. So if I were to press go on iOS 14, I would get a much different behavior than if I were to press search in iOS 13. Forget the library, forget app pages, just use Spotlight to quickly launch apps. Number two, and this is kind of peak weird Apple. Tapping the back of your phone can unlock all kinds of potential. Mine isn't activated right now. This is like your phone. But when you get iOS 14, you will want to immediately go to settings, accessibility, touch, scroll all the way down, and then select back tap. As you can see, you have a double tap and triple tap option. There are a lot of really good ready-made options for you. Let's take a look. Accessibility shortcut, app switcher, control center, home, lock screen, mute, notification center, reachability, screenshot, shake, Siri, spotlight, volume down, volume up, accessibility options, scroll gestures. But the icing on the cake is that you can assign any shortcut you want. So for my double tap, I will assign Google Assistant. And for my triple tap, I will assign Screenshot. Let's see how it works. So let's try double tap. How do I take a screenshot? Uh, there's an easier way. Let's triple tap. So where can we tap? I think we can tap just about anywhere. We can tap on the camera. We can tap on the apple. Tap up top. And we can tap on the bottom. Pretty flexible. Number three. Hey Siri, open voice memos. Apple claims voice memos is the most popular voice recording app in the world. That kind of makes sense because it's pre-installed on every iPhone and is totally functional. Apple has improved it with a somewhat buried edit function that reduces background noise and adds some compression to your voice to increase overall clarity. It's a really good option, I think, if you generally find voice memos to be good enough for your needs. This is my not enhanced recording. My voice is not enhanced. My voice is not enhanced. Well, that's for sure. Now the enhanced version. My voice is enhanced. My voice is enhanced. My voice is not enhanced. My voice is enhanced. Immediately, you can tell it at least reduces the background noise. To enhance your voice file, select these three dots, select Edit Recording, and then select this magic wand here. One other nice add is the ability to group recordings into folders. You can add a folder here, and you can always get to all of your recordings here. A quick number four here. Here we are in settings, I want to show you about a new, maybe better way to jump around menus. What you want to do is hold your back button. When you do this, you will see a list of nested menus. Selecting any of these will take you where you want to go. I think this method can be faster or at least less calorie burning than continually swiping or continually pressing the back button. I want to go back to the settings home screen. Number five, some new camera options. There is this quirky new setting that may appeal to the more vain amongst you, and that is to have your selfie picture go WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. With mirror front camera, when you view your photo, it looks the same as when you took it. Hello. 
While talking cameras, I'll go ahead and point out the iPhone 10, the 10s, and the 10R are finally getting some much desired iPhone 11 features. The first one being QuickShot, where you start to take a picture and then you can slide over to convert it into a video. Second, when on video, you can now change the resolution and the frames per second right on the camera screen. How democratic. Next, we're going to clock. This is maybe not a big deal, but signals to me that Apple is willing to occasionally get over their sacred UI controls like wheels and sliders and just let me do a direct type. I'm gonna set a new alarm. Anyway, gonna wrap this up. If you can, maybe provide a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.